By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. We are starting off the new year by answering your emails that you sent at feedback at sexwithemily.com. We've got a long year ahead of us and my goal is to give you the guidance you need to have better sex and relationships. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com where you can listen to all of our podcasts. Sign up for our mailing list, which you should do. A lot of you have been doing that lately, and, and I've been getting great feedback, and I love sending you, send you a newsletter once a week with some important tips and tricks. Ticks and t- ticks, no ticks, and trips to... <laughs> I don't want any ticks. Dude, Menace, I haven't talked. I know. On you're the radio. Just, it's Happy New Year, everyone. That I'm around, that's why. Oh, yeah, you make me so nervous. I'm shaking. Yeah. I'm here with Menace. Hi. This is our first show, 2015. I happy know. friggin' New Year. It's crazy. And uh, thanks for all the people hitting me up on Twitter and Instagram and all that, saying that they're excited that I'm here. I love that. I, I, I don't know, you know if, you, if I give any good feedback or input on the show but i think they just like that i you know you i poke I, I poke at you and i know you make me reveal stuff that i maybe yeah. wouldn't and you give me shit about stuff that isn't even relevant anymore but that's cool if you guys are entertained <laughs> by him poking fun at me that's awesome yeah. and you do give good advice from time to time um no but i'm happy to see you and i hope this is going to be a great year yeah. i'm feeling good about it i really am i feel like a different person actually oh that's good i, t- I-, I took time off so did you what were you gonna say honestly no i i I got a whole different vibe from you when you, I saw you today that you're a different person. Because <laughs> usually, like, <laughs> when I see you before a show, it's just, like, this crazy, like, Tasmanian devil mess of a person, even though I still love you. But uh, just, <laughs> like, all over the place, you know? And now you just seem, like, really focused and relaxed. I don't know what the hell's going on, but just keep on doing that. I am. I am. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. And I have to say... Well, I finally took some time off. I went mm-hmm. away for almost like 10 days with my family, which normally people go with their families and yeah. they need a vacation from the vacation. But you know, fam, my family's pretty mm-hmm. chill. Yeah. I went to Florida. I was with my mom for five days at her place. And then I went to my brother in South Beach with my nieces. Have you ever mm-hmm. been to South Beach? I haven't. But it's I, crazy. I've been to it's like Orlando. Vegas on steroids. No, Orlando is not. <laughs> yeah. The rest of Florida is all interesting. Mm-hmm. That's where always all the weird thing people cut off people's heads and yeah, like, yeah. You, know, you find it floating in the swamps and stuff, yeah. or they do weird shit. But let me tell you about uh, Miami. It, it's like South Beach is kind of like mm-hmm. Las Vegas, but it's kind of like I mean, really, everyone's beautiful, working out. Mm-hmm. Like it's very, I mean, it's kind of materialistic, and everyone mm-hmm. like it's about the nightclubs and like everyone's it's really flashy. And but it was yeah. a freaking great time. We were on the beach. I went running every day. And the other thing is, I've been meditating mm-hmm. twice a day. I've always. But in done medit like I've mm-hmm. learned meditation about ten years ago, but it never was part of like my day to day practice as I always wanted to be. And it, it's every day, twice a day for twenty minutes, and it's I seriously think 
it's really helping me be clear and focused and Good. I feel relaxed. I think also, I mean, most of all, it's really just the time off because I haven't had a vacation in a million years. So mm-hmm. it was good. That's and great. I'm so excited about everything this year and about the shows because this is actually going into our 10th year of doing Sex with Emily. I mean, we kind wow. of started in 2005. Yeah, 2005. Yeah. And 2005. And so I've been thinking, I actually just created a, um, a, po- a survey because I want to hear, like this year, I want. I know you like the shows and I love that you've all been listening, but I want to take them to the next level and I want you all to be really happy and I want to hear from you. So it's a survey that I'm going to be tweeting out, you know, putting on my website, putting in the newsletter, all that stuff, where however you find me, it's Sex with Emily across the board um, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And it just like takes you like three minutes to answer a few questions about what they want to hear, what they like, what they don't like, what you like about Menace, all that stuff, or you don't like about Menace. And um, I think it'll help us make better shows. Good. So I feel good. How about you, Menace? I'm great. I, uh, I'm loving living here in L.A., as I've said in past podcasts, uh, doing a morning show. I, it, for some reason, though, even though our morning show is doing really well, you know, I have one year left on my uh, contract. So I don't know what's, uh, you know, up after 2015. Wow. Who knows? Have you been here a year yet? Uh, about nine months. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so... so I We're getting amazing support on the show that I do. The it's Woody Show? The Woody Show, yeah, on Alt 987 if you live in L.A. You but can, can't they... It's a podcast, too, no? Yeah, you just search okay. The Woody Show on anything. We, okay. don't, we don't... It's not about boners. Yeah, it's not about boners or sex. You're not going to learn how to, you know, pick up women or anything like that. If, if you're really into pop culture and talking about... Right. All kinds of stuff. But you don't know if it'll get renewed. So Yeah, yeah, like you never business. knew. It's so, like, yeah. You never know. So right now, uh, 2015 is just about having fun and, uh, you know, doing the best that you I can. You always have fun, though. You're in Vegas or Disneyland. If yeah. you, you guys should all just follow Menace on Instagram. If only just to see that he's either in Disneyland or Las Vegas, like, every day. And he's the hardest working person I know. And I'm not <laughs> sure how he does all of that. He's Menace, right? Yeah, Menace, just yeah. Menace, M-E-N-A-C-E, which is funny. So you're talking about traveling over the holidays. Um, I went back to San Francisco, visited family, but on Christmas Day, I flew straight to Hawaii, to Oahu, and I went all over the island. And believe it or not, I was walking out of a restaurant with my girlfriend, and then uh, about five minutes later, I get a notification on my Instagram saying that, hey, uh, I'm a Sex with Emily listener. I just saw you outside the restaurant. No way. I wish I could have got a photo. And I... I wrote them back. I'm like, why did you say hi? And they're like, oh, it was, it was too late. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. That's yeah. Sex with Emily listener in Hawaii. That's so cool. Well, hello, me. Sex with Emily listener. You know, that hap- that, that's awesome, man. It's, you're yeah. still recognizable, too. That's, yeah, that's really you weird. You are, though. I don't think that I am. but You know you are. You've got the look. And yeah. you're on billboards everywhere. But besides that, no, your glasses, your thing, your, menace- yeah. your menacisms. That's funny. I know I get bumped because there have been a few times where I've been out mm-hmm. and people are like, I just saw Sex with Emily. Like, I remember one time I was like at Forever 21 or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this event was like a few years ago. And someone's like, I just saw that, or a year ago, I saw Sex with Emily. I'm like, why don't people think they can't say hi? Like, we're like some, yeah. like, like, no paparazzi, no hello. Yeah. It's like, I love you. If you yeah. like the show and you listen, oh my come God. Say come say hi, please. Say hello. I say felt so up. bad because I would love to talk to a person. But that's so cute. How they're doing and they all that They recognized kind of stuff. you. Yeah, that was really cool. So Because we were on a um, television show together, too. Yeah. A long time on, ago now. On the TV. On the, t- on the TV, which was a good times. Yeah. Um, and so this show, so Menace, you know how we love hearing from our people. Mm-hmm. We're going to be answering your emails. Uh, uh, we've been getting so many great emails lately. So feedback at sexwithemily.com. And man, our Facebook page is blowing up. People love our facebook.com slash sexwithemily page because we put up really useful tips mm-hmm. and tricks and all that stuff on there. And people ask questions through there as well. So you can yeah. do it that way. And so these are some of the topics we're going to cover. And then also sex in the news, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, how to get your girlfriend interested in sex toys. Menace, right. you're going to want to listen to this one. Uh, sex tips for busy newlyweds. A guy can't stand his girlfriend's family. Jealousy. <laughs> out of practice with sex and just not having enough sex. Those are yeah. some of the topics we're going to cover on the show. Okay, sex in the news. Menace, right. the window for online dating is now. Okay. So if you resolve to find love in 2015, I've got some bad news for you. Your window of opportunity may be a whole lot smaller than you think. Uh-oh. According to forecasts from Match.com and Plenty of Fish, two of the country's largest dating sites, the single most popular time for online dating, the window when the most people sign up, log on, poke around, will be January 4th Mm -hmm. from roughly 5 to 8 p.m. Zeusk, which is another dating focus site. Oh, yeah. I I had some friends hooked up off of that. How do you – I guess people just do them all now, right? Everyone's like on Zeusk. These are – yeah. They're on everything. Everything. Why not, right? 
Um, they say that it's the most traffic time was on Sunday after New Year's. So in terms of, uh, so it says that um, in terms of the number of fish in the sea, it's all downhill from there. Exaggeration. Match is 2.4 million North American users and plenty of fish is 90 million worldwide. So you can probably find a date. But across the board, dating sites see way more action between New Year's and Valentine's Day than any other time of year. So you've got wow. like two months right now. So millions of people, like New Year's, but it's kind of mm. hard waking up that day after New Year's, isn't it? When alarm for you, you get up at 3 a.m. Yeah. But I mean, it's freaking rough that first day back and everyone wants to talk to you because everyone puts mm. everything off in December, but everyone's like contemplating going back to work and now they're like, I'm going to go online and date. Oh, there's also a special... A spike in post-holiday searches for porn. <laughs> I'm sure. Everyone's searching for porn. Mm. And it also has to do with the dreariness of the winter months. And wait a minute. so this There is, was probably a lot of breakups during wait, the holidays. Is, and then they were looking in, into porn. Okay. Exactly. You know, because that's a good breakup time because people don't want to buy gifts and stuff like that, you know? Totally. Well, and no, then, yeah. So then they're online I looking at think porn. It, exactly. I always think that people break up over the holidays because... Yeah, they don't want to buy gifts, whatever. But I guess the, the dumping season is kind of more like sp- spring. Oh, really? Too. Yeah. But I don't know. You don't want to like – sometimes if you're like, I'm kind of into this person, not like you yeah. really want to go to their family's I house and buy I want to start a gifts. new year, a new life without exactly. you. Clear everything. Do you make yeah. resolutions? Uh, no. I, I don't really uh, – I mean, we – actually, uh, some friends of mine, we're talking about reflections, you know, instead of resolutions, like right. reflecting on – things and how you can make things better the next year but not like saying oh we're gonna you know do this or do that you know just yeah that's good kind of reflect because reflecting. resolutions the thing about resolutions is if you just say something like i'm gonna quit smoking or i'm gonna find love it's so you have to have goals you have to mm-hmm. have measurable and strategic goals that you're like i'm going to go on three dates a week or i'm going yeah. to approach three people online so you can have it measurable that's mm-hmm. how you're going to succeed with your resolution yeah. but if you just say i'm going to lose weight it's not going to happen. Yeah. Just going to find love. won't happen. But you got to change your behavior so these things are more likely to happen. I think, uh, I think one thing I'm going to do that I did set a goal was uh, I'm going to be on this radio station in Santa Cruz like on the weekend. Oh, you are? Yeah, but I can do it from L.A. No, like your so, own little show? Big show? I don't mean little. No, no. You it's never like say a, little it's to a, a man. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. You're cute little. No, never. it's like uh, it, I just playing music and then talking over That's awesome. Music. What's, Nothing big. Okay, that's fun. So hopefully that comes together. I already talked to them and everyone said okay. So hopefully Half Moon Bay Station? No, not Half Moon Bay. Santa Cruz. Why do you Cruz. say Santa Cruz? Why do you think Half Moon Bay? Yeah, well, um, it's, it's it's pretty close, close to us. Half That's Moon really Bay. That's really cool. Um, I. So if you're listening in Santa Cruz, I might be what on the station. station there. You can't say. Not yet. No. Oh jeez, why do you always do that? You're always <laughs> dropping things and then not really dropping them. You can't. Um, but that's cool. I'm happy for you. Follow me on Twitter. It's funny because people love you. Like Menace, you've been on the radio for like ten, like in San Francisco too. Everyone's like, you're with Menace. Like people who just tune in or they don't know. Like, oh, you work with Menace. Like they all know you from the. You were on live. Well, I did radio right? in um, in San Francisco about wow, maybe sixteen years. Oh my god. Yeah. It's crazy and you're so young. Okay, the one thing I was going to say before I finish this article on Facebook w- about mm-hmm. dating is that you'll like this, Menace, because we used to have a thing. We used to talk about changing your relationship status and how I'm against it mm-hmm. always, that people yeah. don't need to know your biz. But um, it says that people are far more likely to change their relationship status in January or Febu- February than they are at any other time of year. Yeah, that probably coincides. I mean, yeah. a lot of people probably get together with somebody around Valentine's Day, like, I screwed up once when I was in high school. I got with a girl. I think I've probably talked about this on the show before since we've done it together so long. But if you heard it for the first time, here you go. I hooked up with uh, this girl a week before Valentine's Day in high school. And then on Valentine's Day, she got me a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, we've only really been together a week. I Uh. wasn't expecting anything. Didn't get anything. Dude, your mom's a florist. I know. Dude, how hard is that? Totally screwed up. How did you screw that up? I feel well, like you'd like be like, a, you're like 16 year old kid. Yeah, or something. I was like sophomore in high school. I know. Guys always mess that stuff I up. I know. What's messed up too is because um, for some reason, I don't know why I didn't get flowers that time, but my mom would always hook me up. She would give me like giant bags of like single roses and I'll give them out to all the girls at school. Oh my God, that's I sweet. Like, they probably loved it. The pimp. Yeah. Dude, they that loved is it. so pimp. They used to do that in my high school where you, you pay a dollar. It was like yeah, a fundraiser yeah, yeah. thing and you give like, 
Yeah. And then they cut like the cheerleaders or whatever would come around mm-hmm. and deliver them to the room, and you'd yeah. be so happy. And like a guy would send you one. Yeah, I'll like, just like, have some like girls crazy would... roses. So like all the girls that didn't get a rose that day, I would hook them up. You know, Dude, the storm of rose. You've always just had such a big heart, <laughs> really, truly. You brought them a rose. You're like, yeah. here's a rose, and she didn't get anything else. Um, okay, so here's the more about stuff, uh, porn and the holiday spirit. A lot of people took some time out from all the presents and food to watch some porn over Christmas. Mm. Yes, because we are a, a, a very um, Christian culture and a sexual culture. Let's see. According to Pornhub's annual release of their search and traffic results over the festive period, um, they say that people were searching for it. But if it makes you feel any better about abandoning family time in favor of masturbating alone in your room on December 25th, at least porn lovers got into the festive spirit. So, you know, MILF, do you know that MILF is like the top search term? On it is why always I know you're like I don't want to bang someone no <laughs> but it's true it's always milfs well now people were searching here's the uh, naughty Santa's helper that was the number one search term All right. it Somebody kicked milf out of the up. way what someone must have brought that up in like pop culture or something like that where no then people started searching there's that. a list of them listen it's so it makes sense because when else are you gonna look for santa related mm-hmm. porn but it's a heck of a lot weirder to try it out in mid-june and also on the list a lot of step relative related incest searches because chris is a time for extending family coming over that's kind of disturbing okay. extended family coming over and overstuffed which probably does not refer to how you feel after eating too much turkey gross wow i know like oh a sexy stepdad like uh but here's <laughs> the album mentioned so not only were they searching for santa's helper christmas f mm-hmm. they were searching for just christmas f yeah mrs claus so people want to see mrs claus oh, yeah. getting double penetrated apparently or something <laughs> and black santa people who are looking for a multicultural christmas wow yeah black santa well they're thinking you know <laughs> He might have a nice <laughs> schlong or something. Um, I do have another theory, too. I think a lot of people probably got electronic devices for the holidays, like an iPad oh, or, right. you know, a Kindle Fire or, like, some new phone. So they're they're probably testing out what the porn looks like on their Exactly. On their That's the first thing you do. Gadget, you right. Know? You used to, like, open up Yahoo or whatever. And now yeah, it's like, no. like, how's my porn looking? Yeah. How's the you porn? Is it Jesus. crisp and clear on my new uh, device or what? <laughs> I know exactly. Um, well, I'm glad that everyone got into the um, holiday spirit somehow. But you know, here's the thing about surfing for porn: it's like, and we've talked about this, mm-hmm. and men and women do it too. But for guys, why would they take time off? They do it every day usually, and it has nothing to do with if they're in a relationship or not. Mm-hmm. You're going to need some release, and mm-hmm. they do it. So there's nothing really wrong with that. It's not like <laughs> Christmas you can't do it. It's not like Lent, I guess, if you give up yeah. or something. But it's it's fine. Keep your habits going that make you happy. Unless it's <laughs> obsessive and you have a problem with it, and then we'll talk. Okay, there are seven people who had worse sex than you in 2014. All right. These are all like the top news stories when we hear mm-hmm. all the weird things, people getting stuff, st- things stuck in their vagina oh, and stuff. Oh, yeah. The woman, number seven, the woman who had a sex toy inside her for 10 years. Yes. I don't know how she didn't know that. The teen who simulated oral sex with a Jesus statue. Ooh. Not good. Not good. Anyone who tried to get better at oral sex by licking their phone, an app claimed it could improve oral sex skills. Huh. All people had to do was lick their phones. God. Dude, wouldn't that ruin your phone? The saliva? Uh, I don't think it would ruin okay, it. Okay, so you're licking your phone and it's like simu- It's like measuring your... Uh-huh. Dude, that is not how you learn how to give a blowjob or <laughs> oral sex on a woman. Yeah, you need to listen to sex with them. Like, fall for that stuff all the time. That's hilarious. Like though. charge your like, phone like, in the licking. microwave and then explodes. Like, people fall for internet stuff they all do. the time. They do. It's terrible. Exactly. Okay, the man who just loves pool rafts a little too much. This man has been arrested three times for having sex with pool rafts. Yeah, I heard about that guy. Okay, Alaskans. A survey revealed that the average time Alaskans spend having sex is between 20 seconds and one minute. They're cold. Wow. I don't know. You think they'd want to do it a little more to warm up. No matter. It's a, it's a no. country of, it, 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 it's a state of minute man. Maybe I met these people from Alaska and they just seem so goddamn miserable. I can understand why freezing. now. And you know, speaking of freezing, yeah. Menace, I realize I think like moving to LA, it's been mm. two years for me now. I think I've just been thawing out for two years. Yeah, because it was freaking freezing there. I mean, it was fifty. It's it's between forty eight and fifty three degrees every single day, and no one tells you that when you move to California. I mean, yeah. you grew up in Northern California, but mm. I, young girl, come moving there from Michigan, thought California, palm trees, sunshine. Yeah. That and, always happens. And it's yeah, the tourists go there, and yeah. they buy. But I lived there for a long time, and I just realized like 
today it's 86 friggin' degrees in LA. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I still am like, oh my God, it's warm. And I do feel like everyone's like, how do you like LA? I'm like, well, the weather's great, which seems cliche, but the truth is it really makes a difference. Yeah. In your mind, your, yeah, everything. Like it's healthy. It's good for you. A little sunshine. Okay. And also an 84 year old man who invited two 17 year olds to his house. He met them through a sugar daddy website. The 17 year olds attacked him, tied him up. And uh, robbed his house. That's bad. your biggest fear. Yes. <laughs> well, because whenever I try to talk Madison into trying bondage, I'm he's like, afraid no, that someone's going to tie fire, him up and steal his wallet. My wallet's going to be gone. All kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff. And then number one, the couple who got suctioned together while having sex in the ocean, they ended up going mm-hmm. to the emergency room so they could be separated. Yeah. Those are the people. So if you think your sex life kind of sucked in 2014, these people had it way worse. Terrible. Publicly. On a public, in a public manner. There was a... Oh, what was it? I was I was hearing about this article of like crazy stuff that people got caught in, inside them in like 2014 and it was just insane stuff like oh there was this one where this girl shoved a balloon into <gasps> the guy's pee hole and then tried to blow up the balloon and guess what it didn't really work out for Oh my them. god and then you got to the infected. Emerge- yeah Can you imagine going to the emergency this- yeah, this other guy like tied weights to his wiener trying to make it larger, which never works. That and, does not work. And it like clinched down and he had to get it amputated. His penis? Yeah, because he had it on for like a couple hours before he went to the emergency room. People, really? Okay. Like so you don't need to do You all can do that. kegel exercises yeah. if you want to last longer and you want to have more yeah. orgasms and stuff like that. But really, you don't. There's all these sites about... Can I make my penis larger? What can I do? What can I do? You can't do anything. You're not going to get a penis enlargement. You can just work with what you have. Like we all work mm-hmm. with our greatest assets, our greatest, you know, gifts and things about us that we're challenged with. And I'm telling you, if you have a smaller than average penis or mm-hmm. a penis that you think is small and you don't like, life will go on. You will find mm-hmm. love. Things will be great. Don't friggin' <laughs> get your penis amputated this year. 2015, that should be your resolution, guys. So, Accept and love your penis. So then we got a call from um, from this gynecologist. <laughs> It's saying that he was checking a patient and um, was like putting whatever tools that they do in there and found an eight ball in there. And then the eight ball like rolled out and fell out. An eight ball? Okay, an eight ball from pool? Yeah, from pool. Like a a black ape in her. Yeah, yeah. she didn't know. She didn't know it was a big. How do you not know that's like carrying a baby? Like that's huge. I don't know. But is that real? It was real. It was real. For sure, it was Ouch, real. people, you have to be Dude, really careful I've what you seen, stick in your there's vagina. There's like pornos where like people stick like wine bottles up. Yeah, there. or I'm you sure go to like... Thailand and they like you know they they <laughs> stick they shoot ping pong balls on yeah. your vagina. Have you ever been to Thailand? Seen no. those shows? Yeah, no. Good times. They're very they're they're very adept at um um but making their that's vaginas what I'm do saying. amazing things. Like, that's why like I'm saying <laughs> the sex toy is a gateway drug to. To eight Not balls se- in your vagina. No, dude. Listen to me. The <laughs> sex toys are a prevention from you stick having to stick an eight ball in your vagina. If you get a really good sex toy, you won't have to stick strange things. Like, I remember hearing about the girl in high school who stuck, like, a remote control in her vagina and yeah. all that stuff. Did you ever have stories? Like, you know no, the rumors? No. But, like... I had a rumor, like, maybe a hot dog in there broke off. Oh, God, people. And let me just say about this. It's not. It's actually bad for you to mix the, the, the bacteria. Like, your, the, your, your, your vagina naturally regulates the bacteria in it that we have natural bacteria in it and if you mix anything in it like sugary things people are like oh whipped cream my vagina would be great no you're gonna get an infection and that eight ball god knows where it's been oh, yeah. well now we know that one's been but it's like dirty things are dirty yeah, you don't want to sh- put germs in your vagina i'm sure it wasn't like straight out of the package eight ball you know? <laughs> no, it's probably been sitting there in like some dusty room with some like old guys yeah. playing pool. That's disgusting. That upsets me, people. So um, please just Don't do use it. lots of lube and buy the sex toys that I tell you to buy. Because I believe, and I know, that, oh God, I'm so, this is my whole mission in life, that I do realize that, that, that the sex toy thing, when mm-hmm. we started this, it was still kind of, I felt like I always had to explain like, Hey guys, don't be intimidated. It doesn't mean she, but we, you know, that she wants the sex toy over you. It can't cuddle. It's not going to replace you. But I feel like we've kind of moved past that. We're more than 50, what is it, like 52% of women have all had a sex toy. And of those, mm-hmm. like 70% try with their partners. Yeah. And like I would say, like guys had a good experience, uh, had sex last weekend, mm-hmm. just so you know. And I had a guy never used a toy. And of course, he's, I'm like, I'm his gateway. Because he's yeah. like, you always talk about these toys. Yeah. Do, 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 do. You have this suitcase so, full of them. Yeah, right I got a, suit, a house full of them. <laughs> so I, we tried the, the Jeju Mio, which is a cock ring. 
um, mm-hmm. which, you know, cock rings have been around forever. They, you can, men can use them to um, restrict the blood flow so they can last longer a little bit, mm-hmm. have them last longer, help them stay harder. So now they made them like in the last, you know, 10 years, they make them so they vibrate. So they're like round, they go around. there's a bunch of different kinds. Mm-hmm. There's cheap ones, there's more expensive ones, but you know, Screaming O makes one that like you just throw away. It's like disposable. But the Mio, the one I was talking about is rechargeable and it's like friggin', it's like a powerful vibe, but it feels awesome and it's like stretchy and it's like one size fits most. And it was a friggin' blast. Like you, it, it, it just does all these cool things because mm-hmm. it goes on the penis and then you can have sex, like normal sex. So it's hitting yeah. your clitoris, my clitoris to be specific. Mm-hmm. But then you take it off and it's like, it looks, it's just like a little ring. So it looks like a ring. It shrinks mm-hmm. back down. So it's like a ring you put on your fingers. You could still use it on your clitoris, nipples. You could use it mm-hmm. on his balls. And I'm telling you, it's not that I've been, you know, okay, I haven't done this that many guys, but the guys that I have introduced vibrations to their balls mm-hmm. have never complained. They've liked it. So and you can saying, use it on your nipples. You can drag. It's just this really maneuverable. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's called the Mio. I'm just kind of this that's my new that obsession. We've never talked about. Okay, go ahead. As you're describing that, I'm thinking. So you're ex- external, not internal. The way that I orgasm. Yeah, I can do both. Oh, okay. But I, most women can, if they can do both, not mm-hmm. not most. It's typical for women mm-hmm. to require a clitoral orgasm before yeah. they can have a G-spot orgasm. Like a blended orgasm, so like if I my clitoris is is stimulated enough, then I can, and then we're having sex. I can have both G spot clitoral mm-hmm. blended, whatever you want to call it, and so that just like boom, it's like exp- mm-hmm. it's freaking amazing. And so here's the thing: it's so, external is just such a pain in the ass, by the way. Why? Because you have to use your mouth. Well, dude, this <laughs> is what. It's so much work. It's work for you because yeah. you're thinking your mouth or your hands. Mm-hmm. If you, if I gave you one of these mm-hmm. memes or this ring and you held it on your girlfriend for, for like five minutes, mm-hmm. she, what would you care? You didn't have to do any work. Mm-hmm. She had a crazy orgasm and then you bang her and maybe she'll have another one. So I don't understand. Like, I guess people, guys, if they have gone out of their heads, they have to realize that it actually enhance, it makes your life easier. It's like your new assistant. It should be mm-hmm. your best friend because yeah. it, you takes the, if you don't enjoy going down and you don't have time, let's say you quickie. You're like, oh my God, if I go down in order to take 25 minutes or what did mm-hmm. you even say, Matt? It's like, whatever. You're always like, can I do it for eight <laughs> minutes? But, but this thing, just, it just helps you. It's like your handy helper. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, when you go to the gym and you, you um, uh, what do you do to the gym to like make it more pleasant? You, you know how you put music on and mm-hmm. it makes it go fast. If you're on the treadmill and you're like, oh, I'm listening to music. That workout yeah. went by so quickly. Or you, you enhan- it enhances. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take away. All right. That's all I'm saying. So thank you for asking about my orgasms. Okay. How good. did your girlfriend orgasm? Oh. Um, Tell me you don't know yet because that we don't know. Yeah, I don't know yet. No, that's a good question. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's get into the emails then okay. about the people and from the people, about the people, by the people. But first, a quick word from our, our sponsors, who I love, and they help keep the show free mm-hmm. for everyone. First question, Emily, I'm one of and one of your latest podcasts. You had a script for introducing toys into the bedroom, but you only <laughs> did it on a girl's perspective. You were here for this show, right? Yeah. I've been wanting to try out getting a toy in the bedroom with my girlfriend, and I don't quite know where to start. Neither of us, neither of us, have ever had any toys, and we always jokingly say, "Let's go into a sex shop every time we drive by one." Just wondering if there are any tips that you'd suggest that we do. Thanks, Jay. Okay, Jay. All right. Here's the deal. You're already halfway there. Next time, instead of saying, let's stop by the sex toy shop or driving by the sex toy shop, just turn into the parking lot and do it. Because there isn't a better learning experience for couples than to enter a shop together and explore everything that you've ever fantasized about. Because it can be, it, it's there. It'll provoke you. You'll see, you know, you'll see a bunch of DVDs. They'll watch porn. There's every toy under the sun. There's, you know, lingerie. I mean, they have everything in there. And you can just walk around together and be like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Let's let's try something. And then you could really start to ask each other questions about what turns you on. And just by one thing, you know, I always say like a good starter vibe, if you've never used a vibrator, is like the pocket rocket. It's a great one. It's just a little tiny, you know, handheld vibe. If you want to just, you know, it's like 20 bucks. You, you can also go to, um, if you're in the Bay Area uh, or online, it's goodvibes.com. You can also just let her know that you want to see how much pleasure she can experience. And you think that trying toys together would be fun, especially if she jokes about it with you. It's not like, it doesn't sound like she's working against you on this. And so, you know, 
I think I didn't give you a script for this, but it's the same exact thing I said last time. It's like, hey, I love our sex life together, babe. It's amazing. And I think if we brought a little toys in the mix or something fun, a little some props, it could go to the next level. Happy New Year. Let's take our sex life to the next level. That's what you do. Um, also, if you are in anywhere where there's a hustler store, there's about 12, 11 of them in the country. Um, if you go to a hustler store, you can tell them that Sex with Emily sent you and you get 20% off your order. So, uh, Menace, what would you say to that if you wanted to uh, – well, you don't want to try toys, but if you did, <laughs> do, you just, or do you just agree with me? No. I, I, agree. No, I one. agree. I agree. You know? I haven't talked I, into it after all this time. I, no, I – I'm going to no, spring I'm you something. No, I'm halfway joking all the time. I know. The next thing, though, is about newlyweds. Okay. Let's turn around. Next question, because um, newlyweds have issues too. Hey, Emily, started listening to your podcast, and it's been great. I have a question for you. Let me set up the scenario. My wife and I got married three months ago. We've been together for three and a half years. She's a manager for a restaurant, so her schedule is all messed up. Some days she works 7 to 5.30, others 9 to 9, Mm -hmm. or even 3.30 to 1 or 2 a.m. My job, I work Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30. Needless to say, we don't see each other a lot, and that makes it tough on our sex life. We have sex maybe one or two times a month. For a newlywed couple, we should be having a lot more sex. So the question is, any advice how to get more? Thanks, Mm. Chris. Well, Chris, I'm so glad you're asking this question because, yes, yes, you certainly should be having more sex, especially as newlyweds. I mean, I know you've been together three and a half years, but everyone should be having more sex than one time Mm. a month. If you're in a committed relationship, you should do your best and work on your sex life and work on whatever issues are preventing you from having sex so you're having sex more than once a month. So don't let this become the elephant in the room, meaning don't let it be the one thing that you and your wife both know isn't happening and not talking about. Um, and, and you are hoping in your mind that some miracle time is going to open up where you're all of a sudden going to have time to have sex all day long because that just doesn't happen. It doesn't sound like it's going to happen with her schedule. So you need to talk about it and tell her that you, you know, again, whenever you have these conversations about sex, and I'm going to start my resolution for 2015 to you people. I'm always saying, talk to your partner. Communication is lubrication. And what I realize is that that's so easy to say. You're like, oh yeah, I'll talk to him. But I think it's like that being able to actually sit there and have the words come out of your mouth and know what to say. Like, you know you should do it, but you don't really know how. So I'm going to start putting more words around that so you have the right word. So I think when you talk to her about it, you could say, you know, babe, I, I know our schedule is so crazy and I just, I miss being with you. I miss being with you sexually. I love our sex life and I really love connecting with you in that way and I miss it. So I would say, Chris, say, what does she suggest? Ask her what she mm-hmm. suggests first and just say, like, what do you think about that? Before, because here's that, that's A, right? And then the wrong way to do B would be like, you're working all the time, and then you come home and you're tired, and we never mm-hmm. have sex. I haven't had a blowjob since we got mm-hmm. married. Do you know what that's gonna make her do? That's gonna make her vow never to give you a blowjob again and get mad at you for 16 other things. So it's not just about talking about it, it's about talking about it in a way that is proactive and that isn't without blame, without anger, without, you know, hatred or threats it's anytime you approach someone and you and you use like feeling words like I've been feeling lately like you know I I really miss our sex life and this what can we do about it and you make it an issue with both of you you're gonna get a lot better results than just you know be cranky and complaining because so many guys I know also are in relationships they're like yeah I keep saying like we doing it tonight we doing it tonight you know and that's never gonna make anyone want to do anything Right? The second yeah. someone's saying, like, why haven't you done this yet? Why? There's just different ways of asking for things. Mm-hmm. So also, and here's another thing, Chris, I'm going to say, maybe you need to schedule sex. And, and the first time I heard about scheduling sex, just like you and everyone else probably, is that you think, that's a friggin' buzzkill. I'm going to mm-hmm. look at my calendar and be like, you know, pick up dry cleaning, drive kids a dance lesson, and have sex. You're like, that, you know, whatever. But the truth is, if you know that you're having sex on Friday at 6 o'clock, then you don't have to all week long be anxious about it and worry about it and think, is she coming home or not? Then you know what's happening. You can start to think about it, get excited about it. Maybe you can have a little textual foreplay, text each other mm-hmm. some sexy things, and then you know what's happening. So, you know, plan out, you know, I think date nights are super important for couples. And again, don't put the pressure on the sex. You can also emphasize a need for connection and intimacy if she's feeling like she's just too tired or whatever, stressed for sex. That happens sometimes when you have a lot of stress. So you could just say, I just want to be together intimately. You can give each other back rubs, massages, whatever it is. But mm-hmm. I would plan out date nights, a night where you know, and even if your schedules are changing, mm-hmm. she'll know her schedule week in advance. You can be like, okay, this week it's a Wednesday. 
Mm-hmm. So what do you think, Menace? Because you have a crazy schedule. Yeah, I have a crazy schedule. And that you, you touched on what I was going to say was, you know, what are you doing with your free time? Are you just staying home? Are you just sleeping in bed all day? And if find things to go do that get gets her excited to, you know, maybe go in bed. If it, like what? If it's just going to dinner, if it's You don't mean to like movie, tequila shots? No, I mean, right, no. definitely But, but whatever work. it is, create a whole thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like have a date because it, 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 we get excited when we try new things yeah. together. So yeah, take her to dinner. What have you done that's been a fun night? So anything new, unique? Uh, you know, she loves Justin Timberlake. We go to <laughs> Justin Timberlake show or just like a concert or uh, just going to dinner at a, a nice place and stuff like that. Even though I'm like really tired, I don't want to go out, but I still go and do it anyways, you know, because... She's been at home exactly. the whole time and bored. And that's one of the compromises yeah. you make in your relationship so it yeah. doesn't fall apart. Because if you had it your way and you didn't have a I'll girlfriend, be you'd be at home. the house all day. All day. day. You would never leave. Never leave until I had to go back to work. <laughs> right, know? exactly. No, it's totally true. Yeah. And I get it. So it gets you out. And any couples mm-hmm. who, like, you know, try something new together, too. It's, it's yeah. exciting and it would be good for you. Even it's like going to the grocery store together or something like that. Right, you know, cooking just, together. Just doing stuff together. I mean, totally. every day I just want to go directly home into my bed, but my girlfriend wants to go run errands somewhere, and then I go. You do. It's nice of you. Do you I ever go s- with her. Yeah. Even though like I the don't last want thing to. I do is be in traffic. Yeah, I don't want to go do any of that stuff, but I still go do it anyways. You know. Now, was this something that you guys had to talk about in the relationship, or you just always compromise? I just it? knew that myself that I can't be like not see not see her all day and then say oh yeah go run your errands i'm just gonna be at the home sleeping and i'd have a hard time with that see i would just want to be home and sleep yeah I'd be like yeah and can you stop by starbucks and, yeah. and i'll see you in two hours because i'm taking you now yeah but you can't do and that you can't you gotta cut you have to do something compromise. you gotta hang out absolutely okay next email dear emily I hate my girlfriend's family so much. I adore her son, even though he's a little bit bad at he's a little mm-hmm. badass and her and her um she and I have a decent relationship, but her mother, her aunt, her grandparents make me want to give up and move on. I love her, but knowing that they might be in my life forever scares me. I don't know what mm-hmm. to do. They're so judgmental, start drama all of the, all the time, and I don't need or want the bullshit. Should I leave her and get my head straight and mentally prepare myself and maybe one day fix things or stick around and hope there isn't a brawl one day? Thank you, Tony. Um, my, my recommendation on that is why do you even care that much what – they have to say, you know, I mean, it definitely, if it like goes between you and her, like talk it out with her, like you don't need to be having a fight with the family or discussing anything with the family. Like who effing cares? I don't care. Right. You know, if someone is like some like uncle or aunt is upset with me, I'm not going to go and go talk to them. I don't, I don't care. Right. Like, well, but, all I care is about the relationship that I have with my girlfriend. Right. Exactly. And you know? he, but the family, here's the thing, but I want to say Tony's like, welcome to the world of relationships. Because when you get into a relationship with someone, you don't have, you don't mm-hmm. only have to deal with your crazy family. Now you got to deal with their family mm-hmm. issues. So it's like a whole nother thing. Um, so I'd be surprised if you didn't have this issue because there's mm-hmm. always someone in the partner's family that yeah. like kind of bugs you. And it can cause a lot of unnecessary strain in the relationship. So the thing that you have to do is, Tony, first of all, she's your girlfriend. You're not married. Mm -hmm. You don't have kids. You don't have to go to every single family function just Mm because she wants you to. That's one thing. The next thing is families don't change. Your parents aren't going to change. Her family's not going to change. So what you need to do is change your expectations Mm -hmm. of a family. Don't go into it thinking, oh, this year it's going to be great. I'm going to bond with the uncle, you know? No, he's still going to yeah. be the same drunk jerk that he was every year. So your ex- expectations need to change and yeah. limit the – so just be like, this is how it's going to be. Limit the time that you see them and set boundaries. Again, you don't have to attend every mm-hmm. event. I have a friend who's been married for 15 years. Her thing with the in-law, the fa- that's their biggest strife is her husband's family makes her crazy. Mm-hmm. Finally, she's like, you know what? I'm not doing the six days of Christmas. Yeah. Like they want to do like pre-Christmas, post-Christmas. She's like, I'm, I'm not freaking doing that. And this is the first year she was finally, she's like, I had the best Christmas ever because she said no to the Christmas mm-hmm. run and the family yeah. does like the whole thing. And she feels so much better because she's like, because a lot of us, you know, we want to please our partner. Mm-hmm. We want things to run smoothly. We want to do the right thing. But being with their family 24-7 isn't necessarily the right yeah. thing to do. So you're not yeah, married but- and... Also, yeah. just think about it. Like, if somebody in the family has a crappy comment towards you, like, how does that really affect you? Right. They Do don't you really care that much? Who 
cares? Yeah, this... I have a feeling Tony probably has issues with a lot of people in his yeah. life. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I mean, if he's... Yeah, but I totally understand <laughs> that with, you know, you, when you're dating somebody, you do have to feel, you deal with like so many different personalities, you know, attached to that when you're meeting her family or, you know, hanging out with her family. Absolutely. No, Tony, yeah. I don't mean you have issues. I just mean that that's a really good point, Menace, yeah. that, that you said that he, why is he letting it get to him? Yeah. And don't. if you just smile, turn away, you're like, there's the grandma in the living mm. room. I'm going into the kitchen. You can avoid yeah. it. You know, you can just be high, smile, and let it roll yeah. off your shoulders. People might say, oh, it's, just talk it out. But people don't change no matter no what. No one ever, you know? ever, ever, ever changes. Sorry. I mean, unless they want to change. And that's yeah. amazing. But you're never going to make anyone change, Tony. So I would just say, I think that you just got to, you know, change your expectations. I don't mean to say you've issues with everyone. But the fact that he lets him get under her skin probably mm. means that he just really wants the relationship to work with the girlfriend. And she also might have a part in this because she might be putting undue pressure on him. Mm -hmm. She might be saying, you know, I need you here, I need you here. And you know what? Yeah. You're allowed to say, I'm going to go to two out of four of those. Mm -hmm. And again, I, if there's any issues, you talk it out with her. That's what I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think so too. People's, people got to talk about everything. So talk about communication. It's a lubrication. Mm -hmm. Your favorite line. It is my favorite line, and um, it's going to be my tombstone. Even though I'm dead. Good. Don't talk to me when I'm dead, but it is going to say communication is a lubrication. I'll write people, it on don't there you forget. Would you visit me? Yeah. I'm just going to, I just want my dust, uh, you know, spread <laughs> okay. all over. Um, okay. All over the... I don't know. I was thinking like the Golden Gate Bridge or something, but I really don't care. No. I don't want anyone to visit right. me and be like, oh, I didn't bring her flowers, whatever. Uh, just like, have a good picture of me. Listen to my podcast. I've done 2,000 podcasts. Just yeah. listen to those and miss me. And I'll chop up your voice to say whatever. You would do that, want. wouldn't yeah. you? You just like would say all the shit you'd want to say to me all these years yeah. that you haven't said. That'd be so sweet. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure I'll like spread your dust at the Hustler Club or would something. You, would you, would you, <laughs> the Hustler Club. That's yeah. really what I want. Larry Flint would stand up and have a moment of silence for me. Yeah. My mom, my parents would be really, really proud. Yeah. Um, just need a moment of silence for that depressing moment. Um, okay. Hi, Emily. I would love your advice. Three years ago, I found out that my husband was having an affair with one of his coworkers. This had been going on for three years, and I had no idea. When I found out, he told me it wasn't an affair, as they never had sex, only oral, and had exchanged photos of each other. I was completely gutted as I thought we had an outstanding sex life and relationship. I've forgiven him, but I still feel unsure and vulnerable at times. Oh, great. We own a company together. He's the boss and mm -hmm. deals with men and women. He's close relationship with his safety officer as she is female, and at times I feel threatened as they spend many hours together. Am I being a jealous wife, or should I be on my guard? Regards? I mean, if there's a Anonymous. history, then unfortunately you're going to be on your guard for the rest of your life. That's exactly. what sucks. Well, you know? that's the thing. I mean, you you made the decision. You're going to stick with your husband and mm. forgive him. But forgiveness doesn't come just because you in your mind decide you're going to forgive him. Forgiving someone and rebuilding trust takes work. Yeah. And the kind of work I mean is marriage counseling, therapy, time, talking about it. And if you just said, I forgive you and you've moved on and three years have gone by and the same issues are flaring up again, you haven't done your work. So mm. – I think it's totally normal for you to feel scared and threatened mm -hmm. in this situation because it mimics what just yeah. happened to you three years ago. Um, so you got to talk to him about it and share your feelings. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, but he thinks I never let it go. Well, you know what? Because you probably haven't let it go because you guys haven't worked on it together. I'm assuming you haven't gone yeah. into therapy together and worked on it because this wouldn't be an issue that you're emailing me about. You would already say, okay, babe, you'd have the language because what happens in therapy, I don't know, people think like therapy is like I'm asking, telling them to go to surgery or something, getting their mm -hmm. like, like heart removed. Yeah. No, I'm telling you that therapy is like the best work that you could do as a couple and I do believe that every couple needs it at some point because you'll learn how to communicate with each other in the right language so these same things don't happen over and over again. So for example, when you first found out that he started spending time with this safety officer, what is she, like a police officer? Was yeah, she like maybe. a safety belt? Whatever. Okay, cool. So you would have been like, hey, babe, this, you know, you'd have words. You'd say, so this is triggering my feelings of insecurity or whatever. And then you'd talk about it like the first time it happened. But now it's been a few months. So I'm saying if you really want to rebuild and you want to trust him, you need to find a therapist. And it's not the hardest thing in the world and it's not going to kill you. It's going to make you stronger. Have fun with that. What, therapy? No, just like... Dude, you it need just, therapy. Have you ever had it? Me? I Believe me, you need the therapy. Dude, I've had therapy my entire life. I know. I've, I've gone to therapy more than I've gone anywhere else on the planet. You've been going to therapy since you were like a kid, right? Ten. No, but I haven't gone in a few years, but I'm going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I love therapy. 
Therapy is a lifelong process. It doesn't mm. have to be a beginning and an end. You can and you can go for three years. You can stop mm. for five. Go back and different points in your life. A great, you know, you have different issues that come in your life, so it's always mm-hmm. you know good to go. And like it's the, the truth is, is that sometimes the best time to go to therapy is when you're not having a crisis, when you're not in crisis, and when you just kind of want to work on things. All right, fine. So you could go if you want me to give you some. Names I don't understand why you think I need therapy. You're just throwing know. that out there. No, I don't think you, you do. I mean, I, I think everyone does. Because you know why? I think everyone needs it because just like how you go to the doctor for a checkup, uh-huh. you know, you go to the dentist to clean your teeth, just might be good to have someone objective to go and, you know, mm-hmm. talk to about some issues that have been floating around your head. Because the issues that we have, the struggles that we have, whatever mm-hmm. our insecurities are, our fears that hold us back, they don't change over a lifetime if you, unless you work on them and you mm-hmm. learn how to deal with them. So... You're not going to change your relationship to whatever issues you have unless you go to talk about it with someone. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. So those are my words for the new year. Everyone go to therapy and um, have lots of sex. Anything else, Manus? No, just uh, make sure you follow the show on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram. I'm trying to think of what would be oh. the best one. There's this new one that I want to suggest. We'll mention it next. Uh, okay. The next podcast where I want you to sign up and be on Why are you teasing? Media. Huh? Okay. If you... Or on iTunes and you download my podcast and you like it, you might want to review it. Thanks everyone for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.